G'day Eagles fans and welcome to Coast to Coast. What a week. Oh my goodness. Wins. They feel so good. We got the touch all of a sudden that has come to us. It's broken a 16 game losing streak. Pretty horrific stuff, let's be honest. But it's over. <laughs> it's just done. And after Sunday, we're back on the winners list. So despite the tense finish, we'll get to all that. We'll get to that. But we've got some talent really in the room that I should address. Oscar Allen, a regular stalwart and a first timer. Elijah Hewitt. I've, I've waited. I've kept you in the wings for mm. too long and you've been bursting at the seams and you're finally here. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm incredibly, um, incredibly thankful that you brought me on finally. <laughs> it's been a few weeks, but yeah, I'm on finally. What's going on, Thumb? It was good to win. Like, how good? One of the 16-game losing streaks was going to come to an end and I'm bloody glad it was ours. Um, yeah. Happy with how it went. Glad a lot of younger players could be part of it. Like, you were the sub for the GWS game. Yes. But... Been integral part of the weekend, playing bloody well. Stiff not to get rising, so I'm sure we'll touch on that. Mm. But I'm glad that you could be a part of it. Ryan Marich, Jack Willow, like it was a good day. Yeah, I thought um, – I forgot about the sub time because I was ready to see you yeah. get absolutely drenched. What were your thoughts? Did you go hard at the young fellas knowing that you'd copped previous Gatorade stinkers? Or yeah, well, I like- hate the Gatorade stinkers personally, being in the midst of it, and then you just have to go have a shower straight away because last time was my debut and I got trenched. I wanted to go say hi to my family. I was feeling gross like orange Gatorade. Mm. So I made the most of my of my opportunity, and, yeah, Ryan was in the in the midst of it. Well, Willow did an interview with us after, so he was sticky for a very long time. Mm. So he copped it really good. How was being Skipper again, mate? Did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was good. I actually do enjoy the challenge of doing it. Uh, it, the hardest part is definitely the pregame speech, but we were pretty aligned with what we wanted to do, so there wasn't really any mucking around. I think if you're to be the captain for a long period of time, like I think of guys, I know he's not anymore, but Scott Pendlebury, who was captain for 10 years, like in the middle of July, pissing down rain, what are you going to talk about your pregame speech? Like you've got that many you're going to have to get up to, but um, I enjoyed it. I'm not sure how to go. I only spoke at half time actually. I gave Duggo the pregame one, mm. but I enjoy it. It's a good challenge. Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa! Isn't that part of your responsibility? You're delegating this all of a sudden. What's going on? Um, <coughs> a part of my leadership development, I'm working on delegation. Mm. So when, so when, so how much notice are you give him to do it? No, nah, so when uh, Duggo and I actually papers is rocked for the captaincy. And I won. I said, oh, I'm happy to do it, yeah. And he goes, okay, can I speak to the boys? I've got something I want to get off my chest. I was like, perfect, or right. more the merrier. But that Boots did it a bit this year, like Gov was doing our pregame speeches at the start of the year too. So it's not something that's foreign or new to us. And I think sharing the love is good. Hear from a different voice and keep it exciting. How did this win feel different, Huey, going from a sub – We've almost had one of the greatest first, greatest first disposals in AFL history. But it wasn't. Almost. <laughs> I said almost. To a game where you've contributed heavily, got robbed of a NAB Rising Star and, and did very well. What was the difference in win? Was it exactly the same? Different your team winning and then coming on for a quarter spurt and then winning a game yeah. that was put to bed by then? Or one that you had to grind out and you played the full game? Very different. Very different feelings. Um, first one was more just an overwhelming feeling because I only came on the last quarter and we'd based, not that we'd sealed the game, but we were pretty close to. So it was all kind of upwards from there. Party time, as Oz calls it. Party time mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter. Champagne. Nothing better. Yeah, we didn't quite get to have it though. Yeah, we didn't. We actually we had didn't. it for 30 seconds and then they started coming back at us pretty quickly. Yeah. So, um, But the weekend was, was absolutely sick to be part of um, a great win and even the fact they came back that last bit, I was – Getting pretty scared for a bit, but to we, win the game. Did you play the majority of uh, game time in the fourth? I did play majority of game time, yes. Came off for a few stints, but yeah, when I was on some from five, ten minute blocks. Before I get to his game, I wanted to ask, because you've I think I checked it, you just played fifty six percent game time in the first quarter. What's that like from a youngster game on, it's all happening, and then having to spend such long stints on the sideline waiting for your opportunity to get on? Yeah, it is it is tough. You do get you get pretty itchy on the bench, but it's obviously a load management requirement. And coming off my ankle injury midway through the year, I'm only six to seven games in, I think, now since that. So the the load's, you know, pretty important to get right. The young fella was on Oz. He's had mm. it 21 times. He's kicked a snag. There's still a few rounds to go, but he's missed the NAB Rising Star nom. Do you get anything now for it? You get a little package? You get a little number? Yeah, I don't know if you get it for a nom. I don't reckon I got anything for my nom way back when. Okay. I think you only get it if you win, but uh, I think there's more. You know, honestly, there's more to life than it. Um, oh, really? And I think genuinely playing an important role in a win should be 
um, should give you more gratitude than getting it, but I'm sure he'll get it in the next couple of weeks. And if you don't, you'll probably get it next year because he's a bloody good player. Let me put this to you. Would he have got it if he kicked two and the most miraculous left foot banana you've ever seen attempted uh, at Optus? Do he you would, think he would have got it? He would have. I thought I had you in the book for the drop punt in the fourth quarter. Like yeah, I was like that. Oh that's a uh, that's a goal, and that's come from someone who missed one from twenty out straight in front of the third, mm. and then I also could have sealed the game, so I missed a couple too. But I thought that was in the book, and and I looked at scoreboard. Big Phil had like twenty touches and one goal already. I was like, this bloke's gonna have thirty and three here. Like he's going bananas and um disappointing. Could yeah. have started that last one, but you know we you move. The look on your face was of immense concentration when you were going to take that set shot in the fourth. I wanted to ask you whether. You still feel any nerves when you're lining up for goal, whether you did in your first year, in your first couple of attempts, whether they've completely dissipated or it kind of depends on the state of the game. So I'll go with you first before I ask how Huey feels about lining up set shots. He's had a couple of attempts. Yeah, you do still definitely feel nervous. I don't as much. I think early in my career I felt nervous because I might only have one or two opportunities a week and like I want to make the most of it. Whereas now I'm more nervous of like time of game and – now, like, I'll make a statement, like, it's important you do this for the side right now. So I remember playing against Collingwood and we were down, like, 30 to nothing. And I kicked two in a row and I was like, why aren't the second? I was like, you need to kick this. Like, get us back into the game here. So that's the the other thing. But I'm pretty good with my routine and process. Like, that's all I think about. I want to get the ball. I walk back to the top of my mark. I tell myself the same things every single time. Coming in, that's all I'm thinking about. Um, and whenever I actually miss... A lot of the time it's because my mind drifts away and I start thinking, oh, it's windy or maybe I go to the right-hand side and, and try and draw it back or whatever it is. But I think just the more you play, you kind of get used to it. Do you get nervous still? I'm sure you yeah, will. Yeah, well, I'm kind of – your first point was I only get X amount of screenshots a game. <laughs> yeah. So I feel the pressure to sort them and I try to get as many as I can screenshots, but as a mid, you're, that's not your responsibility. Um, but when you get the chance, you take it on board 100%. But um, I come into the game with a midfield mindset, so I'm not really worrying about the set shots, but I do have a routine, so I'm actually surprised I missed. I was really confident going back, especially that so my first goal, that set shot, routine went back, Cripper. I've got Cripper when I've got a set shot to yell at me hard foot so, so I can kick through the ball, <laughs> and I actually didn't hear it on the weekend, so if there's anyone going to blame, I'm going to blame Cripper. Yep. I love that. I, I was surprised I missed because I've got such a good routine. <laughs> I love that. So... Huey, what did you think of the big fella's clunks on the weekend? Oh, amazing. Yeah, I had a, I had a front row seat to so that one as well, That the one you got up. Um, what chord was that? I want to say the second quarter is when you had the bigger dangle and you got a little bit of lift time. Mm. Yeah. Is that about right? Yeah. Is that the best clunk you've taken in an Eagles jumper or what? Um, I reckon it probably was like the highest. Yeah, it was the hardest one to take. Like I thought, looking back on it, like oh, I was, can't believe that stuck. I took a bigger one against Collingwood on a Friday night like I think there was like 55,000 in 2021 and that just felt cooler because like the crowd was like roaring and it was like genuinely held on to it or the whole way and landed with it and I just remember that being that was like like early in my career was the first time I played and finished a game and probably thought like yeah I'm I was the best player on the field tonight and like you have that extra confidence that yeah I can be the best player on the ground on any given day um, you landed very nervously from a fan's perspective yeah my back is a, is a little bit sore but nothing to worry for the weekend I uh, made the little Instagram video did you see that one yeah you did yeah so Thanks, I snuck mate. a little bit of Tori Amos in there big Tori fan I yeah. just banged that track in there yeah. it's bouncing off of clouds get it Huey I'm gonna smile but I don't know what you're talking about so no like, I chose the song because he was bouncing off clouds with how high he jumped uh, you know, get the symbolism involved there you there. go yeah Thumper. it's all happening you see all the intricacies in the media department coming out here <laughs> uh, but you did uh, go for a mark at one stage and you ran into big bats and um, I stopped I pulled out of it yeah if you're Two cars, it was a fender bender and he had no damage on the back of him. You just went straight to his bull bar mm. and you just hit the deck and you got crumpled. Yeah, I pulled out of it and tried to avoid him in the air because that landed on my face. So um, that's the last time I let Big Baz stand in the way and, and try and pull out of it. Huey, had, who had the worst <laughs> miss this year? Was it Paul Curtis in the goal square or Oz against North Melbourne in the goal square, uh, back sorry. in round one in the goal square? Oh, I'm trying to remember the one in round one, but the one on the weekend was pretty bad. Paul put Paul Curtis. Oz's was, was, was up there. Was it? Yeah. Whose was worse, Oz? Uh, I haven't actually seen his back, but mine like gives me nightmares. Oh, I reckon I, I got the ball now. further oh, away okay. from the goal, but I had <laughs> more time, and Jack was yelling out, you're hot, and I kind of <laughs> myself. 
yeah, we blame Jack. And you know what else happened? That was the night before we were all watching Ollie Henry. In, he was playing oh, against yes. Collingwood, and he and then I was just like, I'm, I'm never letting that happen to me. Like, <laughs> oh. and then a day later, I'll do something way worse. So Yoey went back, tactical sub. Mm. Haven't seen that in a second quarter in some time. Poor Rhett Bazo got the tap uh, on the shoulder. Mm-hmm. If you get an injury from that point onwards to the fourth, you're in some trouble. But it worked, paid yep. dividends. And Yoey went back. He was pretty good. Yoey was great. It's good to have him back. Hey, eh? mm. you and Yoey have a good relationship because you're both similar. Like. Very powerful players. Are you going on with the personality? No, no. I'm saying just like players-wise, you're very powerful. Like, Yoey plays back mid. You probably play more mid forward, I'd say, yeah. than, than back. Um, and he's probably been a bit of a mentor for you at the club. He has. I'd say, right next to each other, lockers-wise. Yeah. How have, um how is it like playing with him on the weekend? Probably one yeah, of the great. first time. He's probably my favourite player to play with alongside Boots as well. Mm. Um, but, yeah, the the impact that guy brings. And also, like, he's got a bit of dog in him. We all see it. Got a dog in him. Um, and you, you can just know, like, that fourth quarter, I actually voted him trademark player of the round. If you've seen that one tick, Yoey, it was me. Because he's clutch with it on the weekend, got the ball. And this isn't to blow steam up him, but... But he was good that last patch of the play. Get the boy Ozzy. Not talking about the Nori to Oscar to ice the game. Incredible. I was that nervous underneath that. Oh, yeah. like, I was trying to get under it and then just started to turn its head on me. And I actually caught it between <laughs> my legs. Like missed it with my arms. This isn't on the rundown, but Simo's talked about not having enough players out there to almost go through. He hasn't said this, but I assume with not enough players on the track, you can't do as many situational type trainings out on the ground with your match sims and whatnot. Mm-hmm. How much of the last minute and a half was... Uh, tactical and knowing how you had to uh, waste time, spread the ball, or was it simply just work harder than your man, find space and ship it to someone open? Um, it's a good question. I think although we are a youthful side, a lot of our back line are senior players. So our back line the last quarter, Tom Cole, Liam Duggan, Elliot Yo, Shannon Hearn, Jaden Hunt, like mm. all senior players. Were they all ones that touched the footy? Yes, yeah, so they're all the guys that, that kind of held onto the footy. So... Although we have a lot of young guys, they were the ones and the backs of the gatekeepers for when we have the ball pretty much. They're the ones often with it in their hand late in the game. And like it would have been nice to win the ball and have it in our front half so we weren't having to defend out of our back pocket. But um, you always feel pretty comfortable with those guys and it's not really something you train like from years of playing footy. It's just game sense and we're pretty good at doing that as a side historically over the time. I know a couple of games recently we haven't finished off that well, but that's something we've always been able to do pretty effectively. Mm. Who was your best three on the weekend or maybe just your best player, Huey? So you got Cripper playing an ultimate mm. small forward role. You got Big Baz just dominating in the air, tough matchup. You got... Uh, who Mate, else? Bung like, is best on ground. Bung. We'll, we'll yeah, go yeah, to Bung will be out there. Yeah. I'd, personally, I think Cripper receives the recognition within the playing group, so I think that's fair enough. Outside the club, he probably doesn't receive not enough, um, yeah, accreditation for that. But I think, yeah, Baz was really good. He was getting his first hand in it quite a bit, and then went around the ground, some of the clunks he was taking. That which which quarter was it? Third, Third quarter. I was impressed. Mm. What about you, Oz? Were you throwing? Um who else you got? No, you, got I, you got Tim Kelly, no, who was up there as well. You just going to give it to Bung with the, the tall job? Yeah, to come mate. Play? Like he's yeah. obviously announced his retirement throughout the week, but as a 35 year old man playing on the guy's third in the Coleman, who's got 10 centimetres on him and like comprehensively beat him for the day. So Bung was my best. Thought Cripper second best, and I think the best game he's played for probably since he played a ripper against Gold Coast last year. I think JD was sensational, and I think mm. that he embodied in the first quarter. Not a traditional key forwards game. Like he wasn't hitting the scoreboard early, but he was taking marks in defence, marks on the wing, game saving tackles, um, selling candy in the middle of the ground. Like I thought the way he went about, they were probably the three that like stood out for me during the game. Did he sell candy and then demand you make a lead? Well, I think he sold candy and then he saw my lead and wasn't too happy with it. So he said, no, nah, give me another one. And, and I'm just po- pointing to the corner and he put in a nice spot for me. It's very good, Mark. It's also big news during the week, boys. If you lived under a rock, Shannon Hearn is called time at the end of the year. An absolute icon of this footy club and the game. Game's record holder, two-time All-Australian, Premiership captain. There's plenty more accolades. How many Glenn Denning medals has he won? You go, because I know the answer. No, he's won three. He's won has three he? of them. Yeah. Anyway, um, so... Question about him, mate. Yeah. Are we going to get him on the podcast before the year's no, done? Okay, no, don't worry, fans. No. Don't write in your questions no. for him. We'll get him in something else, but he will not be coming on this one. <laughs> uh, but not bad from the, the boy from uh, South Australia, or the man boy um, from South Australia. What was it like 
watching him play out the day, give the speech to you boys. Mm. Did you know it was coming on the day, Huey? Oh, I had no clue, but I did see him walking, putting on a polo, walking into our, our meeting room. So I suspected it, and then you saw the cameras. You know, it's about to happen. Um, I thought it was, yeah, it was incredible. The way he speaks, captivates the room's great, but then the the personalisation of, of telling us before, the media conference was, um, yeah, I almost shed a tear and I was right in front of him. I think he was about to shed a tear as well. There was a few ones coming out mm. and um, to see that from Bung, you know how much it means to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know it was coming. Like I, I kind of was just – and then I went upstairs and went to get a coffee and I saw Pritta. I went, Pritta, how are you, mate? And then as I was sitting there waiting as I ordered my coffee, I was like, why is Pritta here? Like is he speaking to – and then like all of a sudden everything like started to make sense and click in my brain but – yeah, a legend of the footy club. I don't think you can say enough. It was great. I think his sister was over, so she came to the press conference. And, um, yeah, it was a great celebration. And hopefully the last two games of the year will be a great celebration of, of what he's meant. He's been a, a pretty iconic player as a kid growing up, Eagles supporter, like loved him. And then being able to see up front, uh, close and personal, what he does day to day to make him such an elite player and man, he's um, a very impressive person. Did that personality come across to you as a fan to the player? A little bit. He's kind of what you expect him to be. Like he's real no nonsense, matter of fact, pragmatic, and just gets on with it. Um, mm. And that's like if you watch his press conference or his tr- when he spoke to the boys, that's exactly how he went about it. Like he was never about me. So we were, he's doing his retirement speech and he spent two minutes talking about how well Pritter prepared for games and (laughs) how great Pritter is. So it's just him all over. He's talked about not getting any words from Lecker or Cripper in his first year. You're a first-year player. Mm. What was the Bunga relationship like for someone at the top of experience to someone down to where you were? Uh, Incredible. He actually was, yeah, one of the closest people I became close to at the start of the year. Um, and yeah, he, he shed a lot of, um, knowledge and wisdom to me and he actually introduced me to Jodie McGuire, the sports psychologist who I currently see now. I've got a great relationship with her through Bunga. So I think, um, the one-on-one mentoring relationship that Bunga creates is, is second to none. And you, throughout this last year, you've seen why he's the man and the captain he is and, and why he is so respected. All right, we're looking forward to more Bunga fanfare as the year goes on. <coughs> this is now, and congratulations to uh, to Will and Sandy for just bringing up such a legend of a boy, and to Ash, who was apparently kicking with him in the backyard for all those years. And if you see Bunga kick, that's where a lot of the thanks have to go. This is now Huey time, so normally we don't have the guests come in and review the game. But you were such an important guest, we thought you'd be here for the whole time. We thought you'd add a bit there. So I had a bit. You're, talk- prob- you're probably thinking, well, can we talk about me a little bit now? This is, no, I don't this, really care. I'd love to talk time. about the game. Whatever, yeah. mate. Now it's your time now. Guys. I want to ask you a question, mate. Hit me. And this oh, is the deep diving stuff, and I want you to be honest. How deep we going? So last year, right, draft year, it's a stressful year. Yes. I've been there recently. How was having COVID and the flu during your draft year? You got COVID a day before the game, um, before playing for Australia. I've never done that, so congratulations on that. Thank you. You didn't realise you had it. You needed an inhaler to breathe, and you fell asleep on the bus on the way to the game. Then afterwards, you contracted the flu, and you were sick for around six weeks. Yeah. How's the research from the team? That, I'm talk, incredible. I'm, I don't know how you guys figured this out. Talk to me about this, mate. What what what, what happened? But firstly, can, let's just acknowledge, <laughs> if whoever figured this out is incredible. <laughs> yeah, To the you. detail. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Incredible. Seriously incredible. <laughs> Good on you. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, stressful times, you know, regardless of the of the COVID and the flu. Um, but then, yeah, to get it the day before the All-Oz game, I remember thinking, like, my parents are supposed to be flying over for this game and they didn't fly over. And, like, it, they didn't, you know, I was messaging, like, you guys over for this game is in Melbourne. They went over and I was thinking, this is weird. Like, and so, but they didn't tell me, but they had COVID. Didn't want to tell me. So I'm sitting there mm-hmm. going, but I didn't know. I, I was like, oh, I don't reckon I have COVID. Woke up on game day. After about probably five hours of sleep, I'm going, something's not right here, not feeling great. Mm. Had no, wasn't jumping to conclusions yet. Jumped on the bus and I knew something was wrong. I fell asleep straight away on the bus. Think about it, you're going to one of the biggest games of your career to the day and you're sleeping. <laughs> you got the Australian jersey. You got on, the Australian <laughs> jersey. You've got everything. You've got the Australian socks on. You've got your fresh Nike boots, Nike just sent you. You think you're up and <laughs> yeah, about. Love it. And you're not up Good and job. about. You think something's wrong. 
So, yeah, I did my best to get up and about for the game. I think once you got to the ground, the arousal levels were enough to get you going. I didn't have the greatest of games, but as you'd expect from someone with COVID, um, and I do have asthma as well, so those two didn't come hand in hand together. Um, it was a tough, tough game. And then the next couple of weeks played out even worse because I came back, contracted the flu. Whether it was just, you know, made that much worse because of COVID, I'm assuming it was. And so I was trying to get up for trainings and for games. I could literally could not breathe. I remember sitting inside my room going, I'm not I'm not even going to be able to go to train today. So I was sucking on my inhaler like it was anything just to try and get out of the house. It was bad. Do you remember the 2K time trial this year? Yeah, I filmed it. Yeah, do you know? Oh, which the one at the random track? The second one. Was that the random track one? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know I ran that and then tested positive an hour later for COVID? No. After, so I ran a PB and I was like sick as a dog. We destroyed after. Well, that. I felt fine running, going into it. And then afterwards, I was just like, man, I can't run that quick. Like my body's given up. Went home, COVID test positive. So I've uh, been trying to work with the medical department on scrapping 10 seconds off my 2K and just go, all right, that's mm, my that's my that's COVID fine. 2K. So if I didn't have it, I'd be going better. <laughs> it was a weird. Um, 18s carnival for you here. You, you were going in as like the the you were going to go for around the top five. I reckon they were talking about for um, draftable players, mm. and and then you and Rubes almost switched positions in a sense. Mm. Um, was that through? Did did you have a good as good a carnival as what you wanted to have in that sense? It's worked out to be at our absolute yeah. advantage. Like yeah. you've it's accidentally played out mm. as the best possible result. But how much pressure? was on you at the time of you feeling playing those type of games yeah. playing great swans footy in the Colts era we'll get to your flag with bro in a minute yeah but how'd you feel about almost the stock falling to a certain degree yeah it was a tough period i literally was was stressed and i remember calling my manager like every second day going where am i look where am i right now i was falling i was free falling let's say and i got to a point where been there brother <laughs> yeah Toomey was putting me at 22 23 and i was going like not that you want to read into that stuff in draft year but it's easier said than done you're, you're stressing and i was as you said i kind of came to the year as like a Top five, and so I was falling. Didn't have a great carnival. Um, you had a very good game to start the carnival. Yeah, because I remember watching that against Vic M- Country Metro. Is that Metro. Is that a three yeah. goal game or the many yeah. goal game? Two goal one two, two, and twenty eight and t- yeah twenty eight two goals one. Great game to start with, which is handy. Um, and then yeah, that it all kind of fell over after that, and not like dramatically, but. To be honest, I, I look at the back end of it, and I look what the the knowledge and the the experience he gave me, and I was, I'm actually forever grateful. Um, and you know, I can sit in pity, but look where we are now. The dad's a surgeon, and he's instilled with you the importance of study, hard work. Uh, how was that? Year 12, ATAR, did you smash it? Oh, I did all right. I don't want to mention my ATAR on this podcast. Oscar but has, Oscar's did well. flaunted it. Yeah, 88. Got him. Did you, get <laughs> did you actually? Yeah. But yeah, I'll speak to that later. <laughs> But you're studying now, are you? You're doing some intense stuff? Yeah. So well, I'm doing commerce, majoring in business law at uni. I'm just- I Sorry, what are, just slow down. That's a lot. What are you doing? Doing commerce, yep. majoring in business law. Good. Uh, whereabouts at UW? UW. Yeah, good. Cool. I deferred for this. So I was had a year out last year, almost gap year, but studied. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Worked a bit on the on the golf course. Shout oh, which one? Lake Claremont Golf Course. I used to see Path Breno. Three course. Oh, Path three love course. It, love it. I used to see Breno walking it. And because I did a, tri- a one week trial here at the Eagles at the start of the year, I knew who he was. So he used to always walk it and we'd chat. Um, but now, getting to know Breno, I should have chatted to him a bit more. Lovely guy. Great little par three golf course. Great so, course, yeah. yeah. Guy who owns it, ripping bloke, Nigel. Still close to him. I actually went no, there on Monday. Nigel, no, mate. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you win an Alco Cup in the PSA level, mate? Yeah, year before. Scotch. Came over from Guildford, so... So, can we talk about this? Because there's rumours that Scotch bought a flag by, by prying you over from Guildford. <laughs> Any truth to this claim? Nah, there's no... I don't know where you're getting all this info from, but you've done <laughs> you, well. You know where I've got it from. Who? Anyways, number 33. Oh, relentless. Yeah, uh, relentless, man. Give it up okay. to the Alco Cup winners, though. Yeah. Have no, you won now? No, you won. Twos doesn't count, mate. No, nah, no. Nah, I played in the year 11 Alco Cup at really? Hale. Yeah, special times. You're that guy, eh? Yeah. You know, Incredible. Thumper... How many premierships you won, Thump? Did you say it on this podcast? I'm not... You don't say it as North much Beach, as you North Beach, aren't you? With yeah. Beach, Beach, Beach. How many flags you won? Not as many as Tex. Yeah, but <clears> Tex is five, won- five A grade flags. Incredible. Tex has won like 10, hasn't he? Something. He's won 10 flags. Is he the goat at North Beach? Yeah. Tex is like one of the greatest. He's the physio at the club. And yeah, um, yeah he, he is known as the king. That yeah. is Did his he play physio? Was he play physio? Yeah, I remember yeah. one time, strapping your own angle, one strapping of the there. one of the grand finals I missed. So we won seven in a row, A grade North Beach. But one of the ones I missed was through injury, and I was trying to get back into it. And it was in 06, because I remember 
Tex was flying over for the Adelaide prelim against West Coast and Bill Duckworth said, look, you'll play <laughs> if Tex travels to Adelaide v West Coast. So I'm like, oh, joy. So I've just got to hope that like the club icon legend that we need to play and win mm. is like not coming and everyone else is like, we need Tex to be here to win the granny. But he's thumper yeah. playing the wing. Yeah, <laughs> and just a, we just need to thump of the seagull out the side. So mm. that was 06. So he was like, I should be travelling over with uh, the boys to be yeah. the physio. But I also want to go play in a flag for North Beach. So he was, yeah, player physio. What happened? He came back and played. The thumper, out you get. Okay. And we won. Yeah. And I reckon oh, well. Tex would have played a lot better than me. So right decision. He's indeed. like one of the greatest. I know this isn't an amateur football podcast, but he's the greatest, like one of the greatest Amos players. Is he? Though. Yeah, he's He'd right up, up there. there. He's yeah. in the Hall of Fame what, for the well, He was full forward? Full forward. Yeah, he played on ball when he How many was he kicking the season? Don't know. This is before my Don't tell me he was like around 100s. Nah, 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 not in Amos. They nah. only play like fifteen games. But you can kick bags in Amos, surely. Surely Texan was kicking. Yeah, bags. but he was playing. He was playing wherever he wanted. The big fella. So you're deferring. So you're not doing anything at the moment. <laughs> no, I deferred for the first semester, and second semester I'm getting back into it. Doing nice. one unit, one unit, just one at a time. Just one at a time. Next nah, year I might pick just up. Chip two. away, chip away. I know. So I've there. I've got a question for you, man. Me, Oz. I saw something that came out of the media department earlier this year, and it says, "Who are the three people you'd love to have dinner with?" And you've gone Tom Brady who is the GOAT mm-hmm. in the NFL. Dustin Martin, probably arguably the modern day GOAT mm-hmm. right now. And Alexander the Great, which is just completely out of left field. Mm. Can you talk to me about those three and, and what the conversation yeah, would be like? I remember at the time I was reading uh, a passage and it was talking about Alexander the Great. I actually remember thinking at the time I wanted to say Marcus Aurelius, but... Who's Marcus Aurelius? One of the great Stoic philosophers of <laughs> Earth's time. You can read you about it. You don't him. know. No, okay. uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, look at me. Yeah, go no, on. it's nothing perfect, but yeah. <laughs> so great, read, a, a read a book. Of like read a book. Poems and stuff? No, it's not. No, so this isn't poetry. This is just stock philosophy. Um, you, like some boys read it. Um, some boys don't. It's it's great. Some great books like Ego is the Enemy, Courage is Calling. There's some great books. If it's not your thing, don't even worry about it. But I think Mike's read Courage is Calling, not the name of my book. memoirs at all. <laughs> Courage is Calling. Courage is Hung Up. <laughs> Courage is Unknown. <laughs> um, okay, what, who are your three? I don't know. All I'll right. come back to me by the end of this podcast. All right, that's oh. easy. Mate, baseball gun as a junior. Yeah, I've talk seen to, this. Talk to us about your baseball career. Mm. Love uh, a bit of baseball, mate. I do. It was actually my favourite sport. It's still my favourite sport. It as, is. You'll go watch ABL, you used to watch MLB? No, no, MLB. Um, as a kid, used to because well, I used to I play for the Australian team, um, used to travel a lot, and I was tra- I missed a lot of football as a junior because I was just travelling around the country, travelling in the States, travelling to Singapore, travelling to New Zealand. Um, I loved my baseball, and I remember just as a kid going to these – when I was going to the States and we'd go watch games. Like I remember watching the Angels game and watching Mike Trout for the first time and just thinking at like 12, and I was thinking like this is where I want to be. And where the, were you playing? I was a shortstop. And then as I graduated to about the under 15 Australian team, when we went to New Zealand, I turned into a pitcher. Um, but then it came to a point my elbow was getting pretty sore. You had to get Tommy John surgery. You guys know what that is? Have you had that? No, I, I was probably in line for it. Yeah, right. Um, and I was trying to change my pitching mechanics, but I lost a bit of speed. So I wanted to go back to my original mechanics. But yeah, I was probably in line for a, a Tommy John. Yeah, is that disconnection of, of tendons? Or? Yeah, so I, so I think they get a tendon from your shoulder. And put it in your elbow. Put it in your elbow. Yeah, to strengthen it. It's, so Tommy John's is like the first pitcher to ever have it done. Right. Um, oh, so can you I come do, to the party. Can I no just, philosophy, can I, yeah, you know. you know surgery. Actually, I should know philosophy because I studied it. Um, can we just say, he might be the most interesting guest we've ever had. Like Definitely got crazy the, uh, the biggest spectrum mm. of conversational topics. So that means you played your T-ball, junior, you do the inter yeah, 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 you do, do that at Langley Park still? You do that, yeah. You, you go through all the, the junior ranks, and I think most people end at T-ball. Yeah. And they just commit, well, not commit, but they find basketball, all that other stuff. Whereas my dad loved, and I, had, I have two brothers, older one and younger one, and we all just love baseball, and we kept going. And baseball isn't big over here in Perth, but over in Sydney – um, and Melbourne, it's, it's actually quite big and it's expanding rapidly. And that was kind of where Australian baseball took off. And yeah, when at 12, I got, when I was selecting my first Australian team for the Carrot World Series, when I traveled over to Missouri, Branson, Missouri, um, that was kind of like the start <laughs> of like a trigger in me where I was like, I want to play professional sport. Did I tell you the story about, have I told you the Perth Heat story <laughs> when they wanted to get an Eagles player yeah. to throw the first pitch out? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I couldn't find <laughs> anyone. Should I get you? How long ago? Ah, uh, ten years. Okay, couldn't if, find anyone. If there's one coming up, I'll be there. No, I'll I'll pitch gas. 
I'm throwing, I'm throwing 90 miles an hour. Don't even worry about it. Imagine me telling Simo that I've injured our uh, star. <laughs> yeah, he's Tommy Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy Jones said um, you're right. No, I had to dress and I said, because um, no play, you had the weekend off. So I said, oh, what if I get the mascot to do it? So I dressed up as Rick the Rock and threw the first pitch. So you I did. The, so, I, so I can get the box full, of, uh, full of squirt. Yeah. That's so good. Uh, Didn't pitch a strike because you can't hang on to the ball very well with the mitt. Yeah, yeah that's the reason. Probably assume so. Yeah. Um, Atani on his way to becoming the GOAT, mate. Yeah, I, I think right now he probably is considered the GOAT. Two-way player, what best in the game right now. So. It is, it is ridiculous. If you, I remember I was actually looking something on my phone um, recently. Like some of his baseball cards now, like his Japanese 2016 cards, are actually going for like hundreds of grand. Because mm. everyone just knows, give it two, three years, his statistics and his, even just the eye test itself. But he's going two-way. Like he, this guy will pitch a no-hitter all game, then go to the batter's box and hit two homers. Like he you le- can't he's stop leading him. the MLB for, I think ERA and home runs. Yeah, he's which incredible. Is, like, ridiculous. Who do you follow? Right. Well, so as a kid, um, my favorite player was Carlos Correa. Got his. He's a. He's a shortstop. Um, what team's he at now? He's moved. I think he is at. Did back then, he was at the Astros when they won the final in twenty. I'm going to say seventeen. Is that the one which was barred by the uh, marred by yes. the um yes. the signals and all the that? signals? Yeah. yeah. Jose Altuve was the second baseman. Those two like the best upfield <laughs> combo. Um, so you follow the players more than the team, really? Well, at this time, it was more the player because I just love Carlos Correa. I played shortstop, and so I went and bought his glove. And so mm. if you know anything about baseball, mm. it is a very expensive sport. Mm. Like, So the glove, the leather in the glove is like 450 bucks. Cool. So I remember my dad, we had this deal. And anyway, I ended up doing the deal, and, and dad bought me this glove. And from then onwards, I wanted to play professional baseball in this glove. And I remember going to like my first like local game because local games, people just have average gloves and I was rocked up with this Carlos Correa, A2K, Wilson. And I'm thinking like, I'm him. So so say like NBA players got custom uh, NBA shoes. Mm. Baseball players have custom gloves. You can get like, custom this is, gloves, This yeah. is uh, – uh, Otani's glove, like Shohei Otani. Yeah, yeah. This, Mate, is, this is custom yeah. glove. Most, it's the most fashion-based mm. sport, I reckon, in the world. I've never seen anything like it. If you go search up baseball players now, guys are wearing Drip like kings, eh? they are dripping. They're wearing like headbands. They're wearing sleeves. They've got everything going. Like they got stuff under their eyes. Do you know what drip meant? Uh, very fancy clothing that looks cool. Yeah, yeah. It's wet, wet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we could talk baseball for yeah. another hour, but we, we no, one listening. Listening. Yeah. no one will be listening. No one will be listening. Explosive, out the contest, V the Saints, snap, goal, on top of the world, celebration time, the big O's next year, and we get the crowd involved. Talk me through how cool that experience was because mm. it rarely gets done and we absolutely love to see it here on the potty. Yeah, great experience. First goal, I think, was a quarter before that and kick that was incredibly excited. Um, and then to get the second opportunity, hitting the ball at full speed, I see JD with his man. I'm like, I'm probably not going to get touched in that incident. And <laughs> split split the middle and kicked it over my left shoulder. And yeah, got the crowd into it. I got that crowd riz. Well, yeah, well, I, you were standing in the goal square, and I'm looking at you from like ten meters away, and you look at me and like give me like a let's go, and you yeah. turn, you just start, and then you you obviously the camera's on you before the bounce gives it heaps. The interesting part about this, have you seen the behind the goals of Widow? So with those on the other end, and he thinks they're cheering for him because he started giving this to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually Hewitt, it's like on the goals where the guy just kicked the goal. Like, he was telling me about this the other day. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's because um, Hewitt was doing it. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You broke his heart. Well, he was like, no, yeah. Like during the Saints game, like, Hewitt kicked that goal and I got, went like this to the crowd started cheering. And I was like, oh, yeah. like Sounds like a familiar time of when Huey started doing this. <laughs> Let him have it, Huey. Yeah, no, we'll give it to him. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. That was mint. I enjoyed that. I loved it, Oscar, because Oscar gave a smile that was just like, yeah, boy, you do it. You go. It was, oh. it was good, to, mate. I love, I love, I don't want to say kids because we're like, you're five, six years younger than me, but like, love playing with the younger boys at the moment. Like, bring so much energy. Like, love you. Longy. Longy. Hoffy. Hoffy, Wagwan, Rubes when he's here. But Hoffy's, yes. n- Hoffy's never going to turn around and do that, though. It takes a special personality to have the yeah, confidence I've, to You're do the it. only one that's going to do it, so you just got to keep doing it because yeah, Longy won't stopping. do it. He's too much of a respectful king. You say I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping, but it's also, you got to remember, guys like Hoffy, they're the guys that win your flags. They're not going to celebrate <laughs> the crowd, but the stuff they do in the back line is important. So you never, yeah, never undervalue those type of players. That's, even though they don't get that crowd riz, they're still good. <laughs> don't have that crowd riz. <laughs> good team, man, Huey. What about, uh, what about your good cooking, mate? I hear you're a bit of a, a chef master. Have you cooked for any of the boys yet? Had them around for a dish? Oh, I did actually very early days, but now everyone's hanging up, you know, changing um, families and host families and all that stuff. So I'm, I've got to get them back around again. But so I've got an Indian background. My dad's... And elite cook, like seriously elite really? cook. I'm not even kidding. 
Um, what do you like go to family dish? Like if, if dad's cooking, butter chicken. I hope he's chicken. cooking. Yeah, yeah he's, he's cooking butter chicken. Cooking butter chicken. Yeah, he's cooking butter chicken. But the thing about my dad is he can actually cook like almost any cuisine. He just loves cooking. So he's got this YouTube inspiration. If you go into his YouTube, everything for Your dad's you. Dad's got a YouTube, so no, no. He got if you go into his YouTube <laughs> oh, like, right, into his right. phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or his full, full you page is yeah, like yeah. on his YouTube. Yeah, yeah, fit. yeah, oh, yeah. So what? So what channel should people be following to get these? I don't know what he he finds like the weirdest ones, like some outback cooking, and he'll find some inspiration to. Cook like Coley's cook up some lamb and yeah, you know, Coley. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> that's all right. all. All right. So, so no, no trade, trade secrets, but he's you just learned, learned from him. He said, Dad, can you teach me this? Yeah, he's taught me, he's taught me a bit, but I got to find some more independence in that area. This is what we're going to cover for next week, Oz. Mm-hmm. Ashes cricket, mm-hmm. bit of Barbenheimer. Yeah, f- yeah. all right, yeah. Barbenheimer. Mm. So bands went so Oppenheimer. We'll talk about that. Me too. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, oh, me too. We'll yeah. talk the Budwa. We'll talk that next week. Yeah. But right now it's time for question time with Huey. All right, first question, and it is from Magnetic Inertia. Inertia, mate. Inertia. That's bad for me. On days you weren't motivated to train, what did you do? In brackets, I'm an insp- inspiring young athlete. Oh, that's, that's a athlete. loaded Maybe question. Not, yeah. Um, I think personally, not that I've learned all the trades and secrets, but I think routine is the most important thing for an athlete in consistency because every day you wake up, um, you're not going to feel feel motivated every single day. But, um, yeah, from what you learn, the, the players that do it for the longest and the most longevity and are the best are the ones that they get up regardless of how they feel. But I f- personally like a routine. Miguel Sanchez wrote in Oz, mm-hmm. quickest players in Eagles colours to get to 100 goals. Yeah, right. Uh, Scotty Cummings took 25 games yeah, to get there. Oh, my gosh. 32 games from Summer. I would have taken a while because I spent like my first couple of years playing down back. So how many games are you going to took you? Maybe like, I think I was playing Sydney, so like 70-odd, yeah, 72. 73. That yeah. wasn't a hard question. What about JD and JK? I think JK would have been a bit quicker. He would have been, was it West Coast Eagles goals or just... Yeah, so JK took a couple of years at Colton to get going, but once he was here, he was kind of rolling to maybe like 45 or something. 53, yeah. And then JD like 57 or something. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't so far. How many games he played? JD, yeah. And maybe like just under 80. Yeah. Jed McMission, <laughs> who is your number one fan? Who is my number one fan? Yeah. Oh, I have no clue, mate. Was it mum? Mum? Dad? I'm going to say my little brother. brother. Little brother? Yeah. Love yeah. it. Is he like, man, that, was, that, that goal was fire. Um, Last night. No. Like, what, 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 is he, what is he doing that makes you think, oh, this guy is all about me? Um, he No, he just, just kind of watches how I go. He's just a supportive human being. I, and I see him on a day-to-day basis, so that probably helps. Mm. How good was playing a waffle flag with your older bro? Sick. Really cool. Um, he was the captain of the team, and I played with my best mates. That's one of the things about college football which you love. You play with your best mates. Similar to PSA, probably not as good as PSA. I found PSA premiership like just <laughs> incredible, my brother. <laughs> uh, but the cold flag was awesome as well. Two flags in one year. It doesn't get better. That's um, awesome. Um, is your brother still playing footy? Yeah. Older one's playing at Swans. Yeah. Cool. Um, I got one from NT Bird 33 How do you compare yourself to the likes of fellow draft picks, Ashcroft, Sheasel, and Wardlaw heading into the draft? I'll throw in Cabman as well because he did go pick one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it's a tricky one. Like when you go into the draft – I mean, looking back now, those guys obviously all, all went higher to me, higher than me. But I think you got to have that person of confidence, mm. um, knowing that it, yeah, it, deep down that I'm, you I'm know, you're better than them. You're going to be have a hopefully have a better career. So that's kind of the mindset, without sounding arrogant, that that I had and I will back myself to have. Uh, people get confused between confidence and arrogance. Yeah. Big difference. Very big, big difference. difference. Jack Haddad, do you think there was a correlation between Oz's Street X collab and getting <laughs> the win? Very, very. Oh, mate. When I first saw that photo, I thought you were a good looking guy. <laughs> ah, not the first thing that came to mind when I saw it. Let's get the that's, big fella back. But that's fair. That's yeah, fair. What was the first thing that came to your mind? Go on. What a pathetic article from Perth now. Oh. What did they say? What did they say? Oh, it was oh. just like they've got time to do this. They like, should be focusing on training. Focusing on training. <laughs> mate, I've heard it since so 2010. Right. Stick it right up, yeah. That's just I terrible. saw that. And guess when I saw that post, guess who was the first person to like it? Liam Ryan. I remember thinking, what are you doing? Big Why are you liking this post? Liam? Big fine. <laughs> Um, he just liked how good looking he was. <laughs> John Dawson wants to know the percentage of time you spend with Simo compared to your line coach. Ooh. Um, well, I spend more time with my line coach because I have to review my game, preview my games. Um, but I spend quite a bit of time chatting Simo as well about my own individual needs and craft, etc. Willow Carr wants to know why you were so sad singing the song, Oscar. 
I was happy singing the song. It's not what this fella says. I think there was a still frame photo where I don't look happy. Ah. Yeah, but that doesn't capture the moment. Okay. Jared Jays, will Trump go into office again? Ooh, that's a great question, Jared. Um, <laughs> I hope he does. That's controversial. Whoa. Whoa. I hope he does. Why? Why? I'm a big Trump fan. What? We'll talk about it off air, but I'm a big Trump fan. <laughs> no, no, we'll talk about it on air. <laughs> Can continue? I was a fan of uh, watching the clip of his nine iron, like punching dart nine irons in on he's whatever. He's a good course. golfer. Yeah, great sadly, golfer. He's, he's a good golfer. Um, he beat you. Jared, J- Jared <laughs> Jays, do you still live in your brother's shadow? Ooh. Ooh. I assumed you knew Jared. How's that? I do know Jared. How um, does that taste? Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> I heard it a bit as a kid, but hopefully I'm not hearing it anymore. Okay. <laughs> Favourite pot at the moment, Laura Abbott, besides Coast to Coast? Uh, I'm, I was just I was telling off air, I'm listening to <laughs> Whoop podcast, just Whoop. some of the stuff in their sleep. And do, you have, do you have a Whoop yourself? Man. Got it on me, baby. Do you enjoy it? Like, talk I love to me. it. Talk to us a little bit about Whoop. Explain for those. For some person okay. who knows nothing about Whoop, there it is. What yeah. on earth is that? Whoop. So yeah. it is a really cool device which basically measure, measures your heart rate variability. It does. It calculates your strain throughout the day, so how much strain you're putting into your body, um, and it does all your sleep metrics, similar to like an aura ring, but it does everything in one. So like it measures your sleep, your deep sleep, your non-rapid eye movement sleep, your light sleep all this stuff which comes into to decipher your recovery period throughout the day. So like if you have a certain certain strain to be able to get up and recover, it will measure your deep sleep and all that type of stuff and see how appropriate you are to train the next day. You want to get all these numbers aligned. It maybe is the extra step, but it's kind of the edge that plays. It's so small the edges between players these days. You try and look for anything. How's your sleep going? Yeah, really good. My sleep numbers over the last four nights, incredible. What numbers are you putting up? I'm hitting about 42%. Um, of my what's it called sleep um, restorative sleep so that's non-rapid eye movement and rapid eye movement so just limiting your light sleep so that's like the state where you kind of wake up in the morning you're feeling real groggy it's because you're yeah you haven't hit the restorative sleep and as you need to and what can you do to get more restorative sleep? personally you're going to find this weird mm. but a lot of I'm a, like a real congested person so I wasn't I, I played real outside yeah, I was deep wing. Yeah, it was something like that. Whatever you, yeah, no. Mm. And I mouth tape. Yeah, so I've seen this big mouth breathing. Apparently, very bad. Stopping you. mouth breathing. So stop your mouth breathing, mouth and, and you will improve your sleep, your energy levels in the morning, everything, your cognitive function through the roof. And I'm not a conspiracy Same. theorist. You try it. Nah, the dentist told me about mouth breathing. I do it all the time. I try to breathe Did you through say my you're nose. You're a grinder, and you said you're real for that. No, you said you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're real for that. Nah, but well, I try to do it through my nose, and I feel like I'm suffocating, so I can't quite do it yet. I'll yeah, build, so I'm trying to build up. Build up to it, brother. Uh, yeah, so before, we just mentioned about numbers then. Loved the moment in the press conference when Bunga was retiring when he was about to drop what he was pressing, mm. the bench press in the gym. Yeah, I love it. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, I do. What's he benching? 150. It's 150. Comfy, 150. He's got the record, 150 at yeah, the Yeah, but he's gone more than 150 Has before. He? I've seen him do like a bit more than that. Not Like, like 160? No, nah, like 155, 157, like around there, but big numbers for a big, big boy. Numbers. And this is him at like 32. Like imagine if he actually... Like, oh, I wonder well, if, if, if he trained to just do this. No, I'm talking problem. about I'm talking about like when he was like 26. Like if he was actually f- f- really going for it. Well, you'd think 32. You're in your strongest. I reckon he. Oh, I reckon he'd be more like Jack at 26, 27. Do you know, he's got that man strength as well. But yeah, man. so he's had that man strength. Was 12. I reckon you 12 months out of the game. If we measure him this time next year, he's still bench from 140. I remember when they stopped when you Curry 140 for the first time? yesterday. Yeah. I remember when they had to tell Curry to stop doing weights, you know. Curry? As, yeah, like they have to really? tell was certain- Really? that jacked? Uh, yeah, because like- really? I remember Nick had it as well. Curry needs to run a lot more than what Bung needs to run. So it was kind of mm. like, what do you need? You need more aerobic, whatever. But they, I'd imagine at some point they've said to Bung, you don't need to do these types of programs. Mm. Well, anyway. I actually have the sympathy. I, I had to carve all my reps. So if anyone thinks I'm cheating in the gym, I'm not. I, so when someone has eight reps in the bench, I have four. So my gym sessions go quicker, but it's for the purpose of maximizing power and reducing my muscle input. Interesting. I didn't know that. There you so, go. Yeah. Maybe I can get that. Go program. check out my gym program. Nice. It's different. <laughs> Last question. Liv Floro, what's something you're proud of that not many people wouldn't know about you? Thanks to everyone oh. who wrote in. That is a very deep question. Mm. Um, I would probably say how I combated last year, like amidst all the 
the problems and, and the stress. It's a highly stressful time to come out the back end and then, um, yeah, with a lot of doubt, like as an AFL player, you, you have a lot of doubt when you first come in. Even though you, you believe deep down you're good enough, you have to fight challenges on a day-to-day basis. And I think I fought for me quite well and I'm playing some decent footy now and hopefully can um, can catch the ride and, and keep pushing up with the confidence because initially when you first come in, you feel quite small in a huge pond. So, yeah, fighting those little battles day to day was was great. Might have been an uphill climb for your first year at the start, Huey, but you've absolutely blitzed your debut performance here on Coast to Coast, His courtesy vision. of Tab Touch. You've, you've got, got the touch. Got the touch, Sing brother. It for me. Give me one of those. You've got the touch. You got the touch. All right. Thank you, mate. Appreciate you. it. This might be a common occurrence, mate. Thanks for coming into the studio and best of luck with the next four games. You've had a, you. a terrific first year, obviously, marred by a little bit of injury, but. Hitting some real form coming into the back end. So Thank you. You all too the best. Us. Thank you, Matt. Keep your food in your bags. <laughs> <laughs>